All right, so where we left off, we were looking for images in Pixabay. So I'm going to go back to that. And I have downloaded a few, right? And you always want to download the largest pixel-based raster image. So I said download, but I don't see it like my screen grabs. I don't see it on my screen. So where you're going to see your downloads, it's going to be in this folder that has a down arrow on it that's next to your trash can on your workstations. So I recommend dragging and dropping that onto the desktop. Our desktop is like our, our drafting table. You know, it's where we put all our collage materials. Then we put them onto our artwork in Photoshop or PhotoP. And then at the end of the class, we're going to organize them all into a folder. So right now I have four. I want a minimum of five. And I think I need more palm trees for this to say Hawaiian shirt. So let me just do another search in Pixabay. And I'm going to look for a Hawaiian palm, and I'm going to spell it wrong. <laughs> and I'm just going to look for a palm, maybe a palm tree. Now, I get tons of results, right? How do I limit? Tony, this goes to your question. How do I limit what I'm seeing in Pixabay? I want to limit it to illustrations. I want to limit its color to black and white apply and so you can limit the type of art you see and I want a palm tree that will kind of work with in the style of what I have this one's pretty good now what if I don't want to just click on this this is something we'll do a lot when we're doing image searching which I call digital mining we'll right click with your mouse and then say open link in new tab that way you can keep searching for elements, like maybe I want some, some leaves, and there's another page. And even though you're required to have a minimum of five, it's always good to have more, more references than you need. So I kind of like this one too, so I'm going to right click and I'm going to open it in a new tab. So I have them here, and I can download, and I'm going to download as long as they're bigger than a thousand by a thousand, it's going to work for our resolution needs. Download that, then I can just close that tab. Download this. Close this tab. Okay, but what if I'm just not find the kind of thing I want, the Hawaiian line art that I want? I'll do one more. Download the largest raster format. Well, sometimes you're not going to find it on Creative Commons open sources. Arturo Herrera doing Disney stuff definitely wasn't limiting himself to only Creative Commons open stuff. So we will go to the wild west of Google Images, the Google Image Search. And when you go to Google Images, it's got some really neat tools. One of them is reverse image search. So if I wanted images that were similar to this, I can just drop that image in, and I can get lots of suggestions, mostly that are trying to sell me products. Right? But almost all of these are going to be copyrighted, and they're going to be of various quality. So if I say, oh, I really like this one, this, this requires attribution. right? So this has Creative Commons, but it has Creative Commons attribution which means you can use it, but you have to give credit to the creator, which would be Luke Ped Club. So every site that you get from Google Images might have different usage rights. But let's just do a straightforward Google image search. I want Hawaiian shirt graphic line art. Because Google Images are so large, in its database and its tags, you can be pretty specific. And I can get something really cool like this and open that link in a new tab and I can look at it, but I can see that it's only 255 pixels by 350 pixels. And so when I look at that image, it's just not going to be big enough for what I need. I need at least a thousand by a thousand pixels. So what can I do to make Google Images less frustrating? 
just like in Pixabay, I can limit the search parameters. So I put Hawaiian shirt, graphic line art, and then I go to more. <laughs> nope, not more. Where are they? The tools. There we go. You'll see tools here if you open everything up. They have made this harder and harder to find. Under tools, they have really changed their uh, interface. Okay, under tools, you will see size, color, type, and usage rights, a lot like you saw in Pixabay. So for size, we want large. Google Images actually used to be a whole lot better. It would give you actual pixel dimension ranges. Now large just means that it's larger than 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. Color, I want black and white. Usage rights, I can say Creative Commons licenses, but that cannot be trusted through Google, right? It's not vetted, it's not verified. So I wouldn't worry about these at all and just assume everything on Google is copyrighted, right? And then I just want to grab one that I think looks pretty good. And I, I can click it, and it will show in the sidebar, and it will show me the pixel dimensions. And I know this one is big enough. So then what I want to do is I want to right-click, and I want to say Open Image in New Tab. because so I want to see the image just on its own, and I want to zoom in on it. Because the other problem with Google Images is it's not curated at all. There's no one saying that this is a quality image. And sometimes it will be 1,000 by 1,000 pixels, but those pixels will be really, really blurry or they'll have a watermark all over them. Once I see it and it's at full resolution, then I drag and drop it to my desktop. Or you can right click and save image as and it will go to your downloads. You want it to go to your downloads. The new operating system actually has a default where things download to your desktop and I guess that's okay as long as you know where they are. Okay, now I've got one, two, three, four, five. Let's see if I have any more of my downloads. Yeah, I've got a lot in my downloads, too. <laughs> I'd say once you have about seven different options, you're good to go. You're only required to have five, but this allows you to be picky. In this class, I actually don't want you to ever move anything to your trash can. If it's trash, just leave it in your downloads folder. Your downloads folder is going to get real messy, but that's fine. That's better than accidentally erasing someone else's work. Question. All right. It's good to like your images. So I've got a lot of images to use. Now if we go back to the directions, the directions I give once you have your images, I've set it up in a program called PhotoP. You can access PhotoP anywhere you have an internet connection. You don't need administrative privileges. If you go to PhotoP.com, it's going to look a whole lot like Photoshop. I am not going to use this for this class. I'm going to use Photoshop, but at the end of class I'll show you how if you save it as a Photoshop file, you can open that and use it in PhotoP. This is a clone of Photoshop. So you can work on stuff in class in Photoshop, save it as a PSD, work on it at home in PhotoP off of a browser at the library or off of any computer, bring it back to class, open that PSD file up in Photoshop, they are interchangeable. So it's really, really, really helpful. Um, this is PhotoP's opening screen, right? Let's compare that to Photoshop's opening screen. So I'm going to go to my dock, and I'm going to open it up. So they really do try to look very, very similar. What we're going to do in either one is create a new file. So if you open up Photoshop for me, we're going to create a new file. And it's good for you to do this even if you've already worked ahead, because the most important thing for digital art is that you are working towards an end product that you can use. And what a very common mistake for raster imaging, pixel-based imaging, is to not create things at the right resolution. Remember, raster images are pixel-based, which means they're a, a tile of tiny little squares. High resolution means that you have lots of those squares, which gives you a high quality image. Low resolution means you don't have that many squares, which means it will look crummy. Printing takes more than 
more than three times the number of squares to look good than something on your screen. So we're seeing on our screen, we see something that's at least eight inches tall. But screen resolution is around 72 pixels per inch. I mean, 72 little squares per inch. Print resolution to, to not look terrible needs to be at least 300 pixels per inch. Right, and 300 is more than 72. So we're going to learn these, and we're going to be tested on them and all this stuff, but we want to set up our file to be the smallest print size that we use in the lab, because this is just an exercise. And that's going to be 8 inches by 10 inches. So when you set up a new document, make sure it says inches. That's called a physical format. Because if you make it 8 by 8 pixels, that's not a whole lot or 8 by 10 pixels. So you want it to be 8 by 10 inches. We want the orientation to be taller than it is wide. That's called portrait orientation. So the height's 10, the width is 8. No matter what content you're doing, I want you to do that. And then our resolution, we want it to be higher than minimum print standard, which is 300. So we're going to do 350. As long as it's over 300, it can be printed. If it's under 300 pixels per inch, I have to shrink your image until it is 300 pixels per inch for printing. Because there's no point in using ink on a printout that looks blurry and, and bad, right? You just sort of wrong. Yeah, you'll get a lot of, because we'll learn the difference between how the printer prints, which is with dots per inch, which is a random diffusion, versus how pixels work with resolution. So if you try to print with a lot of dots of ink, very few pixels, what it does is it kind of sprays an aura around each pixel. That just makes it really fuzzy. Ooh, Photoshop's 3D features might be discontinued. Yes. Which would make it a much more efficient program. <laughs> wow. They were never great. There are better programs for 3D stuff. All right, we're in Photoshop. Congrats. So now what we're going to do is use Command minus and Command plus to see how you can zoom in and out of what's called your artboard, right? You have brand new versions of Photoshop 2023. I'm running 2022, it's all the same, except on the new versions of 2023, there's gonna be an annoying little box at the bottom that tells you like remove background and some other things. For your own use of Photoshop, you can use whatever tools you like. In this studio, on these computers, I want you to click those three little dots at the edge of that little bar and say hide this bar otherwise it's going to always be covering up your work so that it looks like what i have the other thing you need to do is we're going to make it kind of match what i have here i want you to go to window at the top and where it says workspace i want you to do essentials default workspace whatever that might be and that's what we're going to be using so that you can see the tools that, that I'm demonstrating. Next, you do not have the rulers turned on, right? It's very easy to turn on the rulers, but they are incredibly helpful. You're going to say view, show, sorry, view rulers, just make sure it's checked. The nice thing about Photoshop and PhotoP is that when you do this kind of thing, it's going to show you the shortcut for it. So what's the shortcut for turning on and off your rulers? Command R. Command R. So then you can try that. Command R. Turns them off. Command R turns them off. So if they're bugging you, you can turn them off. So Photoshop will teach you the shortcuts should you want to use them. Okay. The problem is, how many of you have rulers that are in inches? None of you, because the default is in pixels. So we have to change that, and then Photoshop will remember for your account. So go to Photoshop, go to Settings, they've changed this a little bit, and then go to Units and Rulers. And I can help all of you with this, but it's just easier if you can do it right now. So it's under Photoshop, Settings, Units, and Rulers. You only have to do this once. Click on that and change your ruler from pixels to inches. 
Now, this is actually a really helpful screen for you to study from. Because